Sure, my name is Dave Boyce. I'm a former naval officer. I'm a graduate of the United States Naval Academy. I have a degree in control systems engineering. And I worked in electronics warfare and nuclear engineering jobs as a surface warfare officer. While I was in the service, I found out about this uh, targeting program. You know, this is, uh, this is psychological warfare. This is a profession, just like there are Navy ships that do, you know, surface warfare, submarine warfare, anti-air warfare. We've got people that, you know, in the infantry, in the Army, they do that sort of work. And we've got, you know, an Air Force that does bomb, you know, strategic bombers. You know, those are the things that you, you kind of see on the news. Um, this program deals with mind control and human-machine interface weapons. They did so much work back in the 50s and 60s that dealt with uh, the human body and how do we, pers you know, how does the auditory information, visual information, uh, tactile information, uh, how is that represented in the body and how can we manipulate, read, and read that information? Well, we've gotten to the point with the modern computing that we're able to accurately depict the body's all basically all all the senses of the body. So the uh, the personality overlays, that's basically a, a recording. You're recording a person that's in a specific emotional state. So say rage, or, or even as something as simple as uh, you know stubbed your toe, or morning sickness, or you, you've got a cold. You can take that raw sensory information and then process it into a way that it generally fits into another any bioelectrical system. And so you provide a bio, you know, bioelectrical input to the body, and then that person will uh, experience that physical sensation that has been recorded previously. You know, you, we have, um, like in the movie industry, they have what they call a, a Foley artist, and they have just libraries of all the different sounds that you could possibly want to use in, in a movie, or say like stock video footage. Uh, something that's that's in a, in a library of information that can be used. Well, this this program uses the same sort of library. It's a, a pre-planned um, existing library of information that can be played onto a, a person's bioelectrical system. And V2K is kind of a, a colloquialism for um, technologies that can provide uh, auditory input into the body. You know, not, nowadays it's it's crystal clear interface with the, the human bioelectrical system. So it's not quite necessarily just to hit us. It's, it's more complex. You can get, you know, the, all of the, you know, whatever um, psych school of psychology you follow, if it's whatever, you know, different psychologists say there's like seven basic human emotions or whatever, you can get into even some of the, you know, sub modalities of each of those with this technology. Uh, and then, but separately, uh, the synthetic telepathy, that is the more advanced uh, human machine interface system that completely interfaces with the body's bioelectrical system. So not only can you get auditory information from that system, you can get gustatory smell and taste, as well as full on uh, tactile, every square inch of your body uh, can be, they can in, in the, the centers which perceive that information in the brain, are, are stimulated and you can create, uh, you know, any, like, like we said before, it's a recording of, or live information of, you know, any sort of touch that you can imagine. You, you know, with this technology, you can, you know, just as sure as it feels like, you know, you're being cut or burned or punched or, you know, they, they can create any, you know, touch sensation with this technology. And, it, you know, it's kind of a, a completely bi-directional system that could hurt you. You know, you, they can hurt you while they're, you know, they talk to you and hurt you at the same time. So it's it's full on torture with this system. Uh, yeah, but yeah, so when way. you're talking about creating kind of like a conflict within the person, that's like some of the, you know, if you start any process, you know, it starts out people doing it by hand and then eventually they automate it. So a lot, a lot of this is done with, with alg algorithms. So, you know, a lot of the, you know, in the past, say in the whatever it was, 60s, 70s, 80s, where they would have to, to do this type of co-intel uh, uh, type of attack, you know, it might be labor intensive. You might have to hire, you know, 30 guys or 40 guys to, to pull one of these programs off. So at some point, they wanted to automate it and go, you know, repurpose their operatives for other um, assignments. And so... What they came up with was what they call a psychotronic mind virus. That's kind of passe term or, or outdated. Um, 
but it's it's just the, the idea that you automate this uh, psychological warfare process. So you have a system that is able to interface with the body and provide the sensation of touch. And for a lot of targets, what they'll do is they'll uh, split the body in half and make uh, every all the touches on the say one side of the body. They'll condition it to maybe to like no, or they'll condition the right side of the body to yes. And between just with those two words being able to commit, you know, communicate no and yes, you can cause a, a lot of uh, inner turmoil uh, just by being contradictory uh, with the person. So I guess the best way to explain it is they used to have these um, games, you know, where a question and answer games that you would play with a, a computer. I think it was back in the 80s or something like that. And uh, it was the four you know forerunners of like artificial intelligence and you know just by playing a yes go yes no game you can cause a lot of uh strife with the person contradicting them and then um you know any, anything that would build confidence you, you you try to negate that and then anything that would uh, cause them to uh, you know be upset you reinforce that or you know depending on how where the program's working they, they try to induce manic and, and uh, depressive states. You know, one, one of the, the key uh, program, one of the key elements to any, uh, you know, psych warfare program like this is, is sleep deprivation. So when you're in a vulnerable state, you know, it, it's just one of those things that they'll, they'll amp up. And, and two, you know, from my experience, it seems like if you're concentrating on something and you're, um, you know, intent, you know, if you're doing work that involves, you know, a lot of physical movement or concentration, it seems to be, you know, more of your uh, focus is, is taken away. And it's, I think it's a matter of, of focus. So when you're, you're lying down to sleep, you're less focused. And then it's just a, a situation where, um, you know, when you a different state of mind like that, less focused, that you, the, the system is able to have a larger input. And so that it, it kind of go, goes to work on you in, in that uh, sense. Uh, but I'm, I'm one of those people that clearly thinks this is worldwide, you know, ground penetrating type of radar system that there's just nowhere you can go that you're not going to be um, clearly linked with, with this system. And I think something that might be insightful for people who don't know this already and maybe have a hard time understanding that it can affect everyone around you too. That they can yes, yeah, they can do that's little kinda, tricky, tricky things with with the people around. Yeah, that's the that's that's the unfortunate reality that you, you have to to explain this to the public. Uh, we're so lucky with the Snowden movie that they can they demonstrated kind of the three hot system. So you think they, they, in that movie they show a graphical user interface. Think of it like a, a web browser, like the tabbed browsing they now have, where you can have you know one, two, and three tabs. Imagine the first tab is what they call the first hop. So, say an average person has 40 contacts, you know, in their social network, you know, on their Facebook page, or um, you know, among their friends and family. That's their normal social network. Well, then each of those 40 has 40 again, and that would be the second hop. So that second tab would have you know 40 times 40, and then the the third tab, you know, of each though each of those, however many of those. Um, those contacts work out too, and, and they say, okay, for one per for one target, if you monitor one person, now you are allowing yourself to gather all the phone data from two. I think they said 1.5 or 2.5 million people just by monitoring one person. And so it seems like there's a similar situation here. If they take, say, whatever it is, 10,000, 20,000 uh, targets, and they're they're putting those targets on this system. If they go three hops out, they kind of give themselves permission to, to really put everyone on it. And it's it's such a stretch for people to understand that it's not just TIs. It's, it really could be everyone, just in the same way that they have given themselves permission to do dragnet surveillance on everyone in the United States, just from monitoring a few uh, people, a few people's phone messages, you know? And... Um, you know, sort of the same, that bit where they were trying to discredit people, you know, most of the public is not aware that this technology exists. The, the, the thing you gotta understand about this program, it's all about trickery and deception. This is a system that has been researched since the 70s and, you know, has been obviously funded year over year and it's been perfected, um, you know, kind of 
to what we're experiencing now as, as TIs. 